third year of India CSR Summit, India's largest space for ideas pertaining to CSR sector. No word has caught our attention more than this word, corporate social responsibility. It has redefined the entire development landscape. It is changing the way business houses think about doing business. With it coming in the picture, we have started talking about terms like engagement, partnership, innovation, competency, ethics, and values. One of such champion to present his ideas and experiences with us. I request Mr. Jitendra Kalra, COO, Reliance Foundation, to address this August gathering. Panelists on the dais and dear friends, very good morning to all of you. It's indeed a pleasure to be here today at the outset I want to thank organizers for giving me this opportunity. In the third year of somewhat making the CSR mandatory, I believe CSR is at crossroads today. One good thing is that I do recall, you know, when the, when the bill was being talked of, was presented, many of the corporates, many of the small businesses were viewing this 2% as some kind of add-on tax. What has got settled and I'm very happy about is that we're all very comfortable with this provision now. There is so much of excitement around this. There's so much of hope around making a difference to the country. There's so much of expectation that each of the stakeholders has built around it. So it looks like, you know, this is settled in. And I'm very happy about this. And good that, you know, uh, there are opportunities like these where for two days all stakeholders come together. We talk about what is working, what is not working, what direction CSR is taking, and, and new directions that probably we can talk about. I think, I think these platforms are an excellent opportunity for all of us to engage. And again, I want to compliment the organizers for giving all of us this opportunity. For this debate on CSR, to take some shape, I would be using this opportunity to share a few perspectives with you. First and foremost is the thought about how and where we should spend this money, the CSR money. Now it is estimated that close to 20,000 crores will flow in the sector as we all settle down on spending this money. Of course, the present spends are much lower. There's an estimate of close to about 10,000 crores that sort of we will reach, all put together, the bigger companies, the smaller companies. But the overall spend is likely to be close to 20,000 crores. Let's also look at what kind of money the government spends. The central government and the state governments pool together close to 600,000 crores in the social sector, 6 lakh crores. So against the 6 lakh crores, we have another 20,000 crores coming in. So what difference will it make? 6 lakhs will become 6 lakh, 20,000 crores. That's that sort of peanuts. If 6 lakh crore has not been able to push us in the orbit that we want us to be in, how would 6 lakh, 20,000 crores help? Well, it has an opportunity to help, provided we are willing to look at this 20,000 crores from a different lens, from a different paradigm. 
See, when the act was being conceived of, the bill was being conceived of, what was being talked of is that, you know, businesses have certain skills which we want to flow into the sector. When what kind of these skills we were talking about? We were talking of skills of, you know, finding solutions. So businesses, as we know, are good at identifying a problem, defining a problem properly, and then of course they put their managerial talent to it, they put their systems to it, they put innovations to it, they conceive of solutions, they pilot some of the solutions, then they, as they move along, they put you know effectiveness and efficiency around those solutions, sustainability around those solutions and they put in mechanisms for automatic delivery of those solutions, more or less automatic delivery. That's what businesses are expert at. So this excitement about making a difference, this vision of, you know, doing something for the country, when you marry this with 20,000 crores and with business skills, a different paradigm emerges. A paradigm of that this is this 20,000 crores is not a replacement for government money. It is not to add on to the government schemes. It is not, you know, as if government will say, Oh, I am falling short of money, give me this money. This is probably to be spent in a very, very strategic manner. The game is all about how can we identify where we have failed. If, if on sanitation, see, recall the days of independence when Gandhiji was talking about sanitation those days and many, many decades have passed and we are still talking of sanitation. Gandhiji used to talk about wash your hands before you have meals and clean your place and have this and have toilets and all that. And in so many decades, we have still not been able to solve the problem and we are still talking about it. Can we pick up problems like that? Can we look at if there are some partially working solutions? And of course, there are areas where there are no solutions at all. And can then business skills be put to use there to create solutions, to create innovations? You know, one good thing, for example, most businesses are very good at what we call as behavior change. You know, they can convert people from a class of, you know, those who don't brush their teeth into masses who brush their teeth. They're good at this kind of a communication to change behaviors. Can we put those skills to use to create solutions which can change behavior of the masses on the ground? And sanitation is more about behavior, less about toilets and less about, you know, infrastructure that we again are about to create in all these spaces. So the point that I'm making is, unless we look at this 20,000 crores as something to be spent strategically, as something to be spent in a business-like manner, I don't think, I, I think we'll, we'll fritter away the opportunity. The 6 lakh crores will just become 6 lakh 20,000 crores and it will make no difference to the country. I think that's where opportunity for each of the stakeholders lies. And each of the stakeholders has to understand this. Now it's become fashionable these days for government departments, for secretaries to call a meeting and say, oh, come all corporates, this is my scheme, contribute to it. I don't think that was the intention of the act. The intention of the act was not to replace government money. It was for businesses to get engaged with the problems for boards to get engaged with the problems, for managerial talent to get engaged with the problems and create innovative solutions. And as solutions are created, pass on these solutions, these new learned skills, these new learned of ways of doing things to all stakeholders in the social value chain. And most importantly, the government, because government is the natural owner of the space. We all pay income tax and our other taxes to the government so that government can take care of the space. They being the natural owner, I think all this has to be passed on. So why am I raising this issue? 
you know, I recall reading an article in Mint recently, just about a few days back. All our discussions, all our analysis are around who spends how much and where. So our detailed analysis is on health sector is drawing this much and maybe rural livelihoods is drawing this much and NTPC is spending so much and Reliance is spending so much. We don't ask the real questions. And what are these real questions? What are they doing differently? Is there a new model on sanitation which any of the companies has come up with? And are they working with the government to pass on the new model to the government? So that then, then maybe 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 crores that the government has for sanitation can be put to good use. I think our debates have to shift. Our questions have to shift from this basic numbers of who's doing what to what strategic things businesses are doing, in what sense they are strategic, in one, what sense they are improvements over the earlier practices, earlier models, in what sense they are innovations, and then are they willing to work with the governments to pass on these solutions to the government, the natural owner of the space. We at Reliance Foundation very strongly believe that that's the way for the money to go. So though we work in more than 500 villages across the country, we know for sure neither we on our own or with our partners will ever be able to reach 650,000 villages of India. It's only and only government that can reach there. So just to give an example, we have a very interesting solution for our poor households, what we call as a nutritional garden at the back of the, at the, back of the house. This takes care of a lot of issues of nutrition, anemia, and other, other such related aspects. Having done 40,000 of these across the country, we are now working with government of Maharashtra and helping the government scale it up to six districts. And similar projects are being negotiated with the government of MP, government of Rajasthan. And we are now pushing in our money on these technical support programs. There also we, we don't intend to charge government for that. We have to spend our own money. Because when we go to the government and we become vendors to the government, the relationship gets distorted. It's no more a relationship of equality. So unless CSR money goes with ideas, with proven models to the government, then probably mutual learning can happen. So, so that's the first point I want to make to this August gathering. Let's shift our focus of debates to looking at CSR from a strategic angle and seeing whether we are benefiting that 600,000 crores of spend or not. One thumb rule that sort of we have actually been able to frame at Reliance Foundation is, you know, to look at where is this money going. So, so we have this classification of soft and hard. So the hard of development and soft of development. Hard of development, for example, if you talk of sanitation, hard of development is about toilets, about pipelines, about buildings, about water supply and things of the kind. But soft of development is all around behaviors, mindsets, systems. Are there mechanisms of maintaining those toilets? Is there social capital existing in the villages which can govern itself on sanitation and things of the kind? So one thumb rule that we have created for ourselves at Reliance Foundation is, is the money going into hard or is the money going into soft? Because we believe largely where we have failed in last few decades is we've not been able to solve the softer part of development. We are great at creating common, common facilities or let's say a, a shed for a school and buildings and things of the kind. But two years later you find they cannot be maintained. There's nobody to use them. The soft, the software of the whole thing misses. So one thumb rule for us in a way to check whether we are rightly spending CSR money or not is to see, are we spending it on hard? No, that's not a good idea. Are we spending on soft? Are we creating new solutions? 
are we addressing problems in an innovative way in the soft arena yes we do that so so that's that's something i wanted to share as a thumb rule for the businesses to look at how they are spending money last but not least i think i have only limited time i wish the debate on csr also shifts in another way when we talk of csr we start talking about ntpcs and ongcs and reliances of the corporate world estimates of course from these bigger companies the estimates are that we'll get about 10000 crores the rest of the 10000 crores is going to come from these smaller companies quite often unlisted companies some of them will have 30 lakhs 40 lakhs 1 crore 2 crores to spend how do we how do we ensure that that money is spent in a strategic manner in the absence of that actually there's a huge risk of that money being usurped by the existing government schemes or by by a political agenda perhaps and the problem is these businesses are small so what i'm saying is there is just no focus on as i was going through the schedule of the day there's no there's no session on csr by small companies csr of companies of 20 lakhs 30 lakhs how do they do it are there some case studies on on something being done what are the approaches they have taken i have been discussing this issue with some of the smaller companies and some of the thoughts which are coming up are they want to look at joint consortiums so what they know is as a small company we cannot allocate managerial talent to the problems we cannot allocate our m&e systems we cannot allocate our own processes and systems because we have our own businesses to manage and we are rather small we don't have the luxury of the bigger companies but what they are trying to do is put up joint consortiums so a few of the companies come together they pool in their money they set up a foundation kind of a thing or they set up a small board to donate the money to ngos in a strategic manner so we'll have to look at some of these collaborative solutions as far as small companies are concerned the i have also come across cases where business councils a city business council is looking at setting up a foundation where small businesses can contribute money and that foundation can drive work and maybe very quickly i think we all need to also focus on developing as as csr matures as csr takes a shape in our country and i have no doubts in coming months and years we'll be able to show to the western world what a responsible business is and what is the new definition of a responsible business uh, we are as somebody said earlier we are the first country to adopt it most of the westerners are looking at us how how does this take a shape and therefore the need of building a vibrant ecosystem for csr and when i say vibrant ecosystem for csr i have in mind effective efficient ngos effective efficient corporate foundations effective efficient donors and consortia foundations foundations at the business councils government various other stakeholders all coexisting and looking at this big opportunity of being able to make a difference to this country thank you very much thanks jitendra rightly said financial and flow is just one aspect of csr it has a far bigger mandate and a larger as uh, perspective this is about coming in of a new actor with newer skills new perspectives and new ideas